Welcome back for another episode of the Boat Build Project. I've lost count of how many episodes we're on at this point, but if this is your first time joining us, welcome. Make sure to go back and watch all the other videos of the series because this boat is coming together, man. We got everything rigged up with the lights, the wiring, the hydro turf in the boat. We redid this whole trailer and today, I mean, you guys can probably see that little boat over there, that's the final quack, but uh, today, we're gonna be talking about this thing and getting this all rigged up. So stay tuned guys and make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video. And if you guys are interested, I've got Max 5 hats on the website once again. So make sure to go pick one up. If you are interested, there's a link in the description. I wonder how many of you guys remember this little boat right here. This is the beaver tail final attack that I bought and it worked. I wasn't crazy about it, and uh, the old combo was using this boat with this motor right here. This is a PPF wood duck. Uh, so it's a pretty solid little motor, six and a half horse. And we're going to be doing what was meant to be done with this motor. Originally, when I got this motor, it was going to go on a Momarsh. A couple years ago, I was supposed to get one, but that kind of fell through because of COVID. And so now we finally have the boat. We've had the motor. We got to see if this motor runs after not being ran for over a year. And we have to get the old transom bracket off of the final attack to put on here. So let's get started with getting that bracket off. Oh, that's a big spider. Let's see what kind of damage has been done to this thing. It's been quite a while since I've even had this boat out and done anything with it. So looks like this bracket, I've been storing it upright. It looks like this bracket kind of got stuck in the mud. So there might be a little bit of rust in there. We got to clean up. There's our bracket. Got to use the hammer. Some of you guys might be wondering what the future of this boat is. I actually have somebody who's going to be taking it off my hands, but we'll cover that in the future when that happens. So I'm kind of excited to see what this boat brings in the future. So stay tuned for that. So I did end up having to purchase the removable transom that Momarsh sells and looks like it hooks on with these wing nuts here. I suppose that's about what it's supposed to look like. Let me tighten these down. Now my biggest question here is, yep, I'm gonna have to drill some holes. It actually goes this way. Slide in there, buddy. There we go. I did have to make a few modifications to make this motor work on the final attack. So I need to rotate the throttle over because I had this handle rotated because it wasn't working uh, 
like this in the final attack because it was like up above my head. But I think that should work like that. I think most people run it that way. So uh, I need an Allen wrench now. Oh, first try. That should work pretty dang well for us there. Okay. I think I was smart enough to put some fuel stabilizer in here when I put it up. And it's full. <laughs> All right, well, we will uh, see if we can give this some pulls and see if she'll start and make sure the dog isn't out here because the prop's going to spin. So this motor has one setting, go. <laughs> no reverse, no neutral, just go. So I've got it on. Kill switch is in there. No dog out. All right, so fuel on. Throw it over to start. We'll give her a pull. Oh, she's wanting to go. Come on, Chinese motor. Ooh. Still runs, baby. size it is there we go had to put that pin in i actually lost the other one so found that one and picked it up she fits she'll turn around and just chill on the boat like that for transport i might put like a little pad on here or something so it doesn't dent that up. So what I like, ah, that was hot. What I like the most about this motor in particular compared to other ones is this is actually not the motor, but everything else is American made. So it's a solid, well-built mud motor. It's not one of those cheap Taiwan mud motors with the really, really, really long tail. This one's short, which is perfect for this boat. I know some of those long tails, I mean, it's like 13 feet back from the motor. so. I really like the style of motor that this is. And it's got, I think it has a stainless steel prop. And it's just, it seems very solid built. And I'm really excited to get to use it more and more. <clears throat> I mean, I used it in the final attack a little bit, but the final attack didn't do the things that I'm gonna be doing in this boat. So this motor is gonna be getting used and we're gonna be powering through all kinds of stuff. So this is a great little addition to the boat. It'll probably need an oil change, new spark plug, you know, just regular stuff, but I don't have the supplies to do that today. I just wanted to get it mounted to see how it looks. And I think it's gonna work out really well. I am gonna store the motor either in the shed or in the garage, uh, just to keep it out of the elements, prolong the life of it, which I like this motor because you can just pop this pin, lift it up, set it down, and do whatever you need to do with it, super light. So. I think this is gonna be a sweet little rig and I hope you guys are looking forward to seeing it. I'm kind of curious to see how many decoys this boat can feasibly hold. So let's start packing some decoys in just to see how many we could possibly fit. I mean, this definitely isn't a boat that I would use to haul like a massive decoy spread. I mean, even in my kayak, this is about the max that I would bring. So there's, there's a decent little pile of them, about two and a half dozen-ish. And then we'd have room for my dog and me and I think that would work. I've got those last pass mallards and final approach that they're definitely smaller and you could pack a lot more in there. So I would probably mix those in. These are just regular full-size decoys, but I think if I got really technical with it, I could probably organize them in a little bit better. I think sometimes 
uh, having them knotted leaves more gaps. So like, if you unknot this, your decoys can kind of lay flat on the floor. Might work a little better, but you do get a little bit more tangles that way. Yeah, I mean, two and a half dozen is about what I normally take. I don't really need a crazy big spread where I hunt, so that's kind of nice. So even then, yeah, even just unknotting them, it takes up way less space. So I still wouldn't really want to put more than that in there, but I think it definitely adds quite a bit of room. Core Joe, come here, let's get you in the boat. Little brown dog in action. So, I mean, we got plenty of space, a lot of weights in the front, I'll be in the back. So I think this would work out, but let me know what you guys think down in the comments. So there we have it guys, got the motor installed and we get to kind of take a look at how many decoys this thing could possibly hold. So I think this is gonna work out really well. I would take it out on the water, but it's not registered yet. So I gotta go and do that one of these days, but projects coming along it's turning into the ultimate duck hunting rig and i'm super pumped about it so hope you guys enjoyed it i'll catch you on the next one